Good afternoon, it's Andy Ewans from Formserve here once again. In this video, we're going to take a look at RCAC, Row Access and Column Control, part of db 2 for i In this video, we will show you how easy it is to implement and control Row Access and Column Control. It's another great feature that IBM has added in the last few releases. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that widely implemented. A few of our clients have them installed and found them very, very useful. Let me know what you think. RCAC, or Row and Column Access Control. So what is it? Row and Column Access Control, which was introduced by IBM in April 2014. It's been around a few years now. It's a method of controlling security to certain sensitive rows and columns in our database. It protects data without us having to modify our applications. I'm all for that. Prior to RCAC, if we wanted any row and column access controls, we would have had a bespoke program that would perform this function. We might have had many logical files or views over the tables to help with this feature. Doing it this way only works well if we access our database solely through this program, this feature. So what about access via ODBC? What about access via JDBC? What about PHP? What about Node.js? The list goes on. And RCAC controls this for us. By going down the RCAC route, it places the rules in the database layer. So it will enforce the security across all interfaces and all types of users. By building this in the database layer, it makes it much easier moving forward to maintain these features. RCAC does expect you to have sound object level security in place. It does not replace that. RCAC can be used on both SQL and DDS defined tables and physical files. It cannot be used on DDM, nor can it be used on program described files. Maybe our clients will hear this video and update their System 36 described files in QS36F library, I can hope. So what are the prereqs for using RCAC on our box? We must have at least the operating system of version 7.2 or later. And we must have the product option 47 of the operating system, 5770SS1, which is IBM Advanced Data Security for I. Option 47 is a free of charge option as it's part of the OS. So if you haven't got it, give IBM or your business partner a shout. And that's all we need to get us going. Before we can do anything with RCAC, the first step is to select a user to be the database security administrator. Only those users with the QIBM underscore DB underscore SecAdam function can administer manage RCAC rules. This user will then be able to assign RCAC permissions to other users. They will not be allowed to see the data unless configured to do so. Use the functional usage commands to achieve this. The WRK FCN USG command lets us modify the users that have this authority. Let us take a look at this command. By entering a 5 alongside the QIBM underscore DB underscore SecAdam entry will show the current users that can perform RCAC administration. Please note we can also use group profiles here to select users, which makes administration a lot easier. If you want to change or add a user, select option 2. Enter the user profile, then either allow or deny that user. Then taking option 5 to display the entries will show the changes we have made. For those experts on SQL, IBM has provided a view that allows us to see all users that have RCAC authority. This view is called function underscore usage and it resides in the QSYS2 library. This is the equivalent to the green screen command disp fcn usg display functional usage. Right, let us get on to the nitty gritty of RCAC. So, how do we implement RCAC? We define row permissions and column masks to add security to our tables. We use the create permissions function to determine which rows are visible. For example, we might only want UK employees to be shown to UK users. 
and we use the create mask function to hide certain columns to the users. For example, we might have a salary column that is only visible to the HR department. We must use SQL to define these rules, we cannot use DDS. Please be aware that an exclusive lock is required to implement RCAC rules. The first step we have to do is to allow RCAC on a table. You can allow row permissions only without any column masking or you can allow only column masking without any row permissions or you can allow both row permissions and column masking on a table. The choice is yours so very very flexible. Please note that this SQL statement to allow this does not change the file format record ID so no need to recompile all your programs that access this table. To allow a table to be used for row access we use the alter table statement with the text activate row access control and to follow on to disable row access on a table we use the alter table once again with the text deactivate row access control. Row permissions are search conditions that describe which rows can be accessed. Rows can be restricted by any of the following methods by user profile, by group profile, by time of day, only on certain days, values in the rows etc etc so a lot of flexibility there. Some pointers for row access make sure that somebody has access to all the rows make life easier for yourself and use group profiles. Let us take a look at the SQL to enable all access. The enforced all access specifies that control is enforced on selects, inserts and updates. Here we can see the SQL that gives all access to any user profile that is member of a group profile. Here we can see the WHERE clause states that if the current user is a member of the former serve group allow full access. So now we have this rule in place, let's give it a test. Here I've signed in with user Fred. He's just a normal user with no special authority. Let me run a query over our employee table with the row rule in force. Results. No record shown for Fred. So now we have the full access rule in place. In the next example, I'll show you how we can restrict row access to only show records that have a salary of less than or equal to £25,000. In this SQL, we are calling the rule employee low salary and we can see the WHERE clause only selecting records where the salary is less than or equal to £25,000. Let us try this rule out using Fred again and run a query over the employee table you can see it's only shown records that are less than or equal to £25,000. In this example I'll show you how we can restrict records based on the group profile of a user to restrict the records he can see by his country code. In this SQL statement we are saying any member of the former self group profile can see all records. If the user is a member of the HR underscore UK group then only show the records where the country code is UK and in the same manner we are checking for the group profiles for the French and the US records. To the first test where Fred is a member of the HR underscore UK group profile he should only see the records where the country code is UK. Let us test this. A quick SQL shows Fred can only see the UK records. If the user is not a member of any of these groups they will not see any records. To test this let me change Fred's group profile over to asterisk none. Run the query again and now we can see there is no record shown. So that's how easy it is to restrict records on a table. If you're not a lover of SQL or don't feel happy using it there is a graphical interface we can use to implement row access. Head over to ACS, Access for Client Solutions, and click on Schemas. That's within the database section. Click on the system name you're working on and find the library or schema you're working on. If you can't see your library in the left hand panel, hit Ctrl Shift I to select a library to be added to the list. Let me add our library, which is IODB02, then press Add then OK 
and the library will now show up on the left hand panel. Now expand your schema. And the option we want to select here is road permissions. Here we can see our existing road permissions that we created within SQL. To create a new permission, right click on the row permissions in the left hand panel, then new, then new row permission. Firstly, we have to give this new permission a name. Check we are using the correct table. Enter the search condition. In here we are going to select rows where the current group profile is IT and they can only see rows where the department column is IT. To ensure we have the correct syntax, it is worth clicking the check syntax button to ensure we have no typos. Click the OK button to generate and execute the SQL needed for this permission. If we refresh the view, we can now see a new generated rule. Let's test this. So the first thing we have to do is to make Fred a member of the IT group profile and then get him to access the employee file. Yes, he can only see all the IT department employees, so we know the rule is working correctly. So that sums up how easily we can show and display certain records for certain users. Let us now move on to how we mask certain column information. Column masks increase security by protecting sensitive information in a field or column. For example, we could mask the following columns. National insurance numbers, salaries, credit card details, sensitive dates, dates of birth, etc, etc. This is not to be confused with DB2 encryption of a column. The underlying data does not change. To create a column mask, we specify a rule that defines when column data can be viewed. If the data request does not meet that rule, a mask value is supplied in its place. Masking rules are defined with an SQL case statement or by using Access for Client Solutions, ACS. Before we start using column masks, we must allow our tables to use them, just like we did for row restrictions. To allow column masks on a table, run the SQL statement to alter the table and then activate column access control. And to follow on, to stop column masks, run the alter statement again, this time with deactivate column access control. Let me show you our first example of column masking. In this example, we are saying that if the user is part of the former serve group profile, then show the salary column named EMCell. Firstly, we're going to call this column mask, mask underscore employee salary, but you can call it whatever you like. Then the SQL statement uses a case statement to determine if the user is part of the group profile. Just exactly the same as we did with the row access. And if they are, then display the EM salary column. If they are not part of the former serve group profile, then display zeros in the column salary. Let's see if our mask is working. Firstly, we run an SQL statement showing the name and the salary over the employee table, with a user signed on as Fred. He is not part of the former serve group, so as you can see, no salary is displayed. Next, we will run the same SQL statement with my profile, who is part of the former serve group. Result, we can see the salaries of every employee. In the next example, let us take it a step further. We are storing national insurance numbers in our table in column EMNAT. So for members of the former serve group profile, we want to show that full number. If the user is part of the HR group profile, then just display the last three characters of the national insurance number. And for everybody else, do not show the national insurance number, but show X's. Let us take a look at this example. Firstly, the column mask is called mask underscore employee underscore NAT. The case statement firstly states that the former serve members are shown the full EMNAT column. Next, if the user is part of the HR group profile, show XXX-XXX- and the last three characters of the national insurance column. And lastly, for all other users, do not display the 
EMNAT column, but display XXX dash XXX dash XXS instead. Let us test this out. Firstly, I will run a query over the employee table using my own profile, which is a member of the former serve group. So all national insurance numbers are shown. Next, I sign on as Fred, who is a member of the HR group profile. Here we can see that only the last three characters of the national insurance number are shown. And lastly, I sign on as Angus, who is not a member of any group profile. Here we can see that the whole national insurance number is masked. Our column masking is working as expected. Let us take a look at schemas as part of ACS now and look at our column masks. Here we can see the ones we have already created using the SQL statements. It's worth mentioning here is the enable status. If your masking is not working as intended, check this column first. Let us now create a new column mask using the GUI. First we select our schema or library, then column masks, then right click new column mask. In this example I'm going to create a new column mask that only shows the bonus column if that column is greater than 1000. We're going to call this mask employee bonus. column we're going to check is EMBON and the SQL statement is when EMBON is greater than a thousand then show EMBON else zero. If the column was null enabled it might be a better option to enter null here but the column on this table does not allow nulls in the bonus field, so I've left it as zero. Don't forget to click the enable tick box, caught me up many a time. It's not a bad idea to check the syntax at this stage to ensure all is well. That's all looking good. Then press OK to generate the mask. Now we can see our bonus mask added to the list and it's enabled. Running a quick query over the employee table will show if this mask is working as intended. Yes, all good. And that wraps up this quick video. Thank you for watching now. How to on IBM My Video Set. I hope you found them useful. Keep checking our website, learning.formaserve.co.uk. We regularly add new ones. Stay safe and see you soon. Thank you.